Good morning, good afternoon, good evening internet, and welcome back to my YouTube channel, Economical Rides. Well hello, you join me here at Motos Matilla, my friendly Void Enfield dealer in Almeria, Spain, and I've just collected my classic 350. I'll just give you a quick walk around, but we'll go over it in more detail in a moment. So the first thing I'm going to do is to go and buy some petrol and then I'll do exactly what I did when I picked up my Meteor. Next to the petrol station there is a large car park so we'll park there and I'll show you the bike in a bit more detail. I'd just like to thank Motos Matia for organising this bike for me. They were very efficient. I paid for it on Monday and Tuesday afternoon they rang me to say it was ready. So that was registered with the plates on it and good to go. Um, they did very well to get the bike in in the right colour that I wanted. So, and I also got some t-shirts and a mug and some other free swag. So I'm very happy with Motos Matilla and I can definitely recommend them to you if you happen to be trying to buy a bike in Almeria, Spain. Which you probably won't be, but anyway. All I can say is I'm very happy with the service they've given me and with the bike I've just purchased. So I'm just going to head over and buy some fuel now and then we'll come back. See you in a bit. Well here we are, we've just filled up the tank and we're just about to head off home. So I thought I'd just give you another quick walk around the bike. No traffic here, nobody hassling me, so we can have a nice relaxed long hard look at the bike. As you can see here, I had the dealer remove the rear seat for me. Um, we've picked that up with the car, so I'll have that at home. So basically we are now down to the single seat variant of the Classic 350. Just show you the instrument panel. As far as I can tell we have no uh, gear indicator on this bike, we just have uh, a fuel gauge, the eco meter, the odometer, the two trip meters and also trip meter F, the low fuel trip meter and the clock, so that's all we get. We don't have a tripper either but that's no great loss, I don't really use the tripper on my meteor anymore either. So there we go. So now what I'll do is I'll uh, put one of my cameras up in the car park and I'll just ride past it a couple of times and you should be able to get a feel for the sound the bike makes. And then I'll pack everything up and I'll head home and I'll give you some of my impressions on the way home. So stay tuned for those and yes, I'll be back in a minute. Bye bye.
Right, so we've just got off the little bit of motorway we have to do to get away from Almeria. And now we're getting on to some more urban roads uh, with lower speeds. So I thought it might be quite good fun to just um, do a little bit of recording with the visor open at lower speeds. And that way you might get a little bit more of a sound of the bike. See how we go. So, not really any first impressions yet because I've literally only been on the bike for a few minutes. So we'll uh, just take it steady. So yeah, there is no gear indicator, we've established that, but that's not really a problem. I never had one on any bike before, well, except my Triumph, that had one. So, not too worried about that. I'm missing the heel-toe shift for a little bit because I've got my thick old motorcycle boots on and I'm, it's a bit of a tight squeeze under the uh, gear lever. But I dare say I'll get used to that. But overall, I mean, looking down from here where I'm sat, it really does remind me of my Bullet 500, this whole headlight nacelle. Um, very reminiscent of the old bullets. The gearbox is nice and smooth so far. I did have one false neutral when I stopped at the petrol station. The green light was on. And I let out the clutch and it went... Bleh! So it wasn't actually neutral, even though I thought it was. But yeah, first impression is it's like it's a very civilised uh, Bullet 500 kind of feel. The riding position and everything is very reminiscent. What I have noticed already is that actually, despite my first impressions when I sat on the bike in the shop, when I came to a halt I reached for the ground and I reached for the ground and I reached for the ground, and the ground didn't come. So you are sitting a bit higher. Um, I didn't have my feet flat on the floor. So, uh, yeah, definitely for people that were hoping it was going to have a slightly higher seat, it definitely has. But uh, even for short houses like myself, I can touch the ground on each side with a fair amount of foot. It's not a problem. But it's definitely a bit higher than my uh, Meteor. No heel toe shifter on this bike, which I am missing slightly because I've got my thick motorcycle boots on down there. And it's a bit of a conscious effort to get that boot under the shift lever to change up. I'm sure I'll get used to it. But that's something I'm noticing. The higher seat height, like I say, the gorgeous instrument panel, the general uh, look view from here from the riding position. It's just chrome and paint and black and red and lovely. So I'm enjoying that. The engine feels pretty much as you would expect if you've already ridden a meteor. Smooth, tractable. Slightly more sporty riding position because this is a roadster style. Um, so I do notice there's a little bit of weight on my wrists, which I'm not really familiar with with the Meteor. Got a narrow bridge to deal with here.
Yeah, the riding position is definitely quite different to the Meteor. So, so I, I could definitely easily get into a situation where I, I have quite a lot of weight on my wrists. But obviously I can consciously try to avoid that by using my core. Um, yeah, and the foot wrists, the knee angle. I, yeah, I would say it's a little bit less of a knee angle than on the Meteor. I think on the Meteor my knees are a little bit higher up. This seems a slightly more relaxed knee angle to the foot pegs. And yeah, I just feel like I'm sat quite high up somehow. But it's comfortable. I mean, it's different, but it's comfortable. I mean, actually, I can already say that. I mean, it's very early days, but it actually doesn't feel like the Meteor at all. It just feels like a different different bike um, because it's got so much different when you're sat on it. It really is a whole u unique kind of experience compared to the Meteor, which is great. There's no point in Royal Enfield building two bikes that are the same. And they've obviously tried to uh, cater for all markets and all tastes. But yeah, I mean, I'm already starting to get a feel for the way the bike steers. It's really not very difficult to get to grips with. It's just an adjustment from the Meteor, obviously. The uh, different size wheels. When I'm sat on the bike naturally, I seem to have my knees on the uh, tank protectors, which is good. That's all in the right place for someone of my size at least. Yeah, there's no doubt this is another cracking bike. It just feels, just feels good. Easy to ride, but definitely a totally different feel to it than the Meteor. It's brilliant. This is definitely a classic for the Bullet fans because it reminds me so much of my Bullet, but hopefully with a lot less of the grief. Let's, let's really hope that that's the case, because if not, this could be the last word then through they would buy, but I don't think that'll be a problem. Right, well we're just going to get onto some faster roads now, so I'll shut up for a bit and um, I'll rejoin you when we're going over the mountains, by which time I will have probably gathered a little bit more experience in the twisties. And I'll just give you my thoughts on that and obviously more in depth with you coming later, but we're running out of daylight now so I can't take too long. But um, the main objective today was to pick the bike up, get it home safely. But I'll give you a little brief update when we're going over the mountain. Um, by then, hopefully, I'll uh, be close to getting my knee down. Well, yeah, maybe not, but hopefully by then I'll have got a real feel for the bike's handling. But I'm not doing too bad now. So I'll see you a little bit later on. And I'll just stop here for now and stop the camera. And we'll speak again in a little bit. Bye-bye. Well, the light is fading fast, as you can no doubt see, and um, I just thought I'd sh stop and have to show you this. I mean, this really isn't a bad place to sit, is it? I mean, it just looks really, really nice. So I'm in love with the way it looks. Also, um, when you're sat on this, you definitely feel like you're sat up high above the instruments. Um, whereas in the Meteor you feel much more as if you're sat in the bike. Uh, you definitely feel like you're up high on this bike. 
I'll just give you a quick uh, quick look again. There we are. Really looking good now with the uh, rear seat off. I think it just uh, makes it look that little bit older. Look at that. What can you say about that? That is just very, very pretty. Covered in oily hand prints and greasy paw prints, but um, we'll get that sorted at the weekend, hopefully. But yeah. Loving it so far, and as I say, when you're sat on it, when you're looking at the tank and the instruments, the instrument binnacle, it just, oh, I don't know, it just feels like, yeah, this is it. And there was a, a stretch of road just now, it was kind of a fairly straight road with the odd gentle curve, with a 70 limit on it, and going down there at 70, in fifth gear, you're just purring along, and it was really, really nice. So, uh, yeah, you can definitely enjoy the cruise on this baby just as well as you can on the Meteor. Anyway, we better get home before it gets dark. I'll probably speak to you again in the twisties with my final initial thoughts. I shall see you then. Bye bye. Well, yeah, it got dark pretty quickly, but I thought, hey, let's use it to our advantage. And I take this opportunity to show you the bike's lights. So, there you go. This is front very nice with those uh, little position lights very nice sorry but it still looks darn good to me and this is the rear end with a big old school round light on the back doesn't the bike look good from this angle? Amazing. Right, so you can accompany me on the last little bit here. There's a little bit, a little bit more twisty here, and I'm about halfway home now, so I will be arriving home in the quick start. Got that a little bit. Um, but yeah, you can accompany me on this last little bit, and then I shall finish off my first impressions video. And obviously there'll be a lot more in-depth stuff to come, but so far I've done, let's just check, yeah, nearly 60 kilometres. So it's not really enough to have much of a good thing, but certainly enough to have a good thing. Unfortunately, from here on in, the on-bike audio became totally scratchy. Um, not just the occasional scratch, but absolutely unusable. It would appear that I had a loose uh, connection somewhere. I'm still trying to get to the bottom of it because it's not doing it at the moment, but I need to do some more testing. So anyway, on this part of the journey, I did make my final conclusions, and I'm going to try to recall what I said and do it in voiceover. I'll just leave the original video running but without the original audio. Clearly, first of all, I was really turned on by the way the bike looks. And as I mentioned in the caption to this video, uh, riding it in the dark, seeing all of the various lights reflecting off the chrome, it really did look quite spectacular riding it at night. So definitely, if you get a chrome one, try riding it at night, maybe through a town or somewhere with street lighting, it just looks amazing. The bike feels very solidly made, just like the Meteor. It feels like it's hewn from a big lump of metal. And it feels very solid. I'm pretty sure it'll be very reliable. And like the Meteor, it's a very easy ride. The clutch is easy to use, the gearbox is easy to use. The engine is uh, tractable, you can you know, have to rev the backside off it. So again, just another lovely, friendly, easy to ride motorcycle. It does have a very significantly different riding position to the Meteor, whereas in the Meteor you do feel to a certain extent as if you are sat within the bike. On the Classic you very much feel as if you are sat on top of it, and you do feel as if your head is quite a way up above the instruments, 
Um, so yeah, it's definitely a much higher riding position. It feels totally distinct and um, it's not a bad thing at all. It's just different. As I mentioned in the video, I'm not able to flat foot the Classic in the same way as I flat foot the Meteor. So the seat is definitely higher. Uh, the seat isn't wider, I wouldn't have thought. It's pretty much similar to the Meteor standard seat. So the fact that I can not get my feet flat on the floor would suggest that the seat is higher and that it's possibly a bit roomier for taller riders or riders with longer legs. I know some of you were hoping that that would be the case because the Meteor is a bit cramped for you. And I think definitely the, the Classic will suit you better. But obviously you need to sit on one in the dealership somewhere to confirm that for yourself. But my first impression is it must be significantly higher because I'm, I'm on the, on the um, balls of my feet with both feet rather than flat footing at the moment. One of my takeaways from the ride back was that I found myself using the front brake more into corners, trading the front brake into apexes. I think it's just that the slightly sportier nature of a roadster style bike as opposed to a cruiser style bike. Um, yeah, it tends to bring out a little bit of the naughty rascal in you. I could well imagine that I will start riding my classic a little bit faster a little bit more sporty intent than I tend to ride my Meteor. When I'm on my Meteor, I really just want to relax and enjoy the ride and I don't really want stress, so I don't try to go fast. But uh, there's no doubt when you're sat on the Classic, the position that you're in, you've got more weight on the front, you haven't got the, um, the, um, the, the size difference between the wheels so that the weight's a little bit more forward the forks don't have quite so much rake as, as on a custom style bike. So you do feel more for the front and that does give you the confidence really to break into the bends. And yeah, I can definitely imagine that I will ride the classic in a more sportier fashion with a grin on my face um, than I do the Meteor. But then not all days you want to do that. So I think it's great if you have both bikes like I do at the moment. Uh, when I just want a nice chilled ride, I can take the Meteor. And when I want to go out and have a bit of a grin fest and maybe push the envelope a little bit, I might be more inclined to take the Classic. So we'll see how that works out. But general takeaway was that the Classic felt kind of like a sports version of a Meteor. You know, if it was a Honda, they'd probably call it the Meteor R, 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 R. Ah, but it's definitely, yeah, it feels like a sportier proposition than the Meteor. Strangely, although I say it's a sportier proposition than the Meteor, my overriding sense was that the suspension is actually a tad plusher than it is on the Meteor. Um, I noticed it going slowly over speed bumps that the Classic seemed to soak them up in a softer more rounded way than the Meteor does. So unless there was some issue with the tire pressures or something bizarre going on, I think possibly the Classic is a slightly plusher ride than the Meteor is, certainly on the standard settings. Obviously there's not a lot to say to the engine and gearbox. I'm a bit cautious about saying anything about the engine anyway because it's unfair to compare a brand new engine with a Meteor engine, it's done over 5,000 kilometers now, um, but the feeling is it's going to be very similar. I wouldn't expect there to be any, any great differences when this one is running. It should hang on to the taller gears just as easily as the Meteor does. And um, the gearbox, no issues at all. As I mentioned, I did have one time when the neutral light was on and I let the clutch out and the bike stalled. So there's a little bit of a, 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 a neutral position sensor problem from time to time but there was certainly no problem uh, changing through the gears up or down it was all very good obviously no heel toe shifter on this bike that took a bit of getting used to getting my thick motorcycle boot under that little shifter there but once I got my foot in the right position there was no problem at all but it's it's quite surprising in a way because I've never used the heel toe shifter before and then I had it on the Meteor for the first time and I've, I've got so used to it now that I actually miss it. So when I got the Classic, I was like, hmm, 
you know, it'd be better for the heel toe shifter. So I dare say you can fit a Meteor 1 to it, um, but I probably won't do it because it doesn't really suit the uh, type of bike that it is. But yeah, it was definitely a little bit surprising to me to notice how accustomed I've become to the heel toe shifter. Another thing worth mentioning, and you may have noticed it in the car park footage where I was doing my ride pies, the Classic does have a very distinctive exhaust note. It's a little bit crisper, a little bit harsher, whereas the Meteor is more of a muffled thump. The Classic seems to have a bit more of a raw edge to the sound. And from what I can gather, it seems to be a very good facsimile of the Classic 500 sound. Um, so that was interesting because, again, same engine, you'd think it's probably going to sound the same. But they've obviously tuned the exhaust to be reminiscent of the Classic 500, which this is obviously the natural successor to. So, yeah, definitely it does have its own unique sound and it's all the better for that. So that was pretty much, yeah, those were the big, um, big data points really from my first impressions. I do have one negative, which I wouldn't have noticed if I'd not picked the bike up at night time, but um, definitely I was disappointed with the headlight performance. On my Meteor, when I went to get my service done at 6am and I had to ride through the dark, I found the headlight perfectly adequate. I didn't use main beam at all and it was I felt perfectly safe and for some reason on, on my on my classic at least it feels as though the the headlight it might be bright enough but um, it seems to just be angled too sharply down um, on standard um, normal beam the road was lit up about 12 to 13 feet front of in front of the front tire so basically you had no reaction time whatsoever uh, you couldn't see where the road went. Um, so I ended up riding the whole way back on main beam. Um, obviously dipping to uh, when I got traffic coming the other way. But literally without main beam, I wouldn't have been able to see where the road went. Now, for me, the headlight looked like it was pointing down far too steeply. Um, I'm not sure whether that's something that can be adjusted. I haven't had a proper look at the bike. But... Um, I don't know if they're all going to be like that, but it might just be something that's wrong with my bike. But that was actually dangerous. I mean, without main beam, I couldn't have known where the road went. It was just literally the little bit of road in front of the front wheel was the only thing you could see and nothing beyond that. So that's something that will need to be looked into. And I will mention it to my dealer when I go in for the 500 mile service. Maybe they can uh, check that and make sure that the headlight was set properly from the factory. So there you go, um, those are my first impressions. Obviously, first impressions on a collection day when you've got a hundred things to think about and uh, you're racing against time because it's getting dark. Um, I haven't got an awful lot of uh, really great impressions. These were just the things that were immediately obvious to me. The rest of the stuff is gonna come with more experience on the bike, hopefully more rides with less time pressure, more daylight and uh, yeah, these videos should be coming in the coming weeks. And I, re I look forward to um, getting more experience with the Classic 350, but overall, as you can probably tell, I like the bike, it's a great bike. And the really great thing about it is for some, someone who owns the Meteor as well, is although they're mechanically on paper, very similar bikes, it, it does have its own character. and It doesn't feel like you're riding a Meteor at all. So they are definitely two very distinct bikes. And, uh, you know, it's going to be really interesting to see where they, where they are different and uh, to talk about that and hopefully help people who have to have one or the other to decide which is the best one for them. So that's something that will be coming in future videos. So anyway, I hope uh, this first little look at a bike, in spite of some of the technical hiccups, has been helpful to you. And as I say, there should be more information coming in future videos. And I look forward to sharing that information with you. So thank you very much for watching this video. 
Oh, I'd just like to say, by the way, because I have had a couple of comments, um, people saying, have you have you taken the um, Classic instead of the Meteor? Have you traded in the Meteor? No, I haven't. Um, just to reassure people, I do have both bikes, and the planned Meteor content is definitely coming. So um, just to uh, reassure people, the planned Meteor content will be coming. It's probably just been pushed back a few weeks now because I need to do a couple of videos on the Classic. Well, once uh, everything's settled down and the classic settled in, we'll uh, continue with the content as planned. So thank you for watching. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please consider giving it a thumbs up. That would help me to get promoted by YouTube and find more wonderful people like your good self. If you haven't subscribed yet, please consider subscribing. That would also help me to get promoted. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video and I look forward to seeing you in a future video very soon. Bye bye.